This afternoon, I will talk about uh, genome alignment. And uh, what I want to uh, give you to, to teach you today is a bit of NGS technology, but we, uh, you already have a raw introduction this morning, so perhaps I will just go fast on this part. But what is important is to understand what type of data when you do uh, NGS sequencing or uh, HCI sequencing, what type of data you will have in hand, what are the problem you have to face with this data, how you resolve it, uh, so what type of error, what type of the data, how we call things, and to become familiar with the, the format of the file you, you will have, and to explain how we process the data. So first, so the short introduction. So as Jared presented this morning, uh, NGS is a revolution that started uh, 10 to 20 years ago when we do the first genome uh, project. And what is important to understand why it's a revolution is because at this time, it takes billions of dollars and years to, to sequence and to generate a sequence of one genomes, where now it takes hours, days, and just a couple thousand of dollars to, to generate the sequence of, uh, one, of uh, one genomes. So here you already have seen that. So it's just an improvement in terms of technologies where before we do it, we do like hundreds of sequence at the, at the same time. Now we do it uh, millions of seconds at the, at, the, at the same time. So how it works? Uh, so the idea is to do the same as what you, what you do with, when you do the um, clone-based approach is to take, uh, to see, to look at the fluorescence of your, uh, of your uh, uh, bases and to look at each uh, incorporate uh, bases, uh, which fluorescent uh, it corresponds, to know which base that have been uh, added to the sequence. So the idea is to take, uh, instead of looking at specific uh, vector, is to take picture of millions of, uh, of sequence at the same time and to be uh, informatically uh, able to resolve that and to, to know uh, okay, this dot correspond to each specific sequence, and then so on for, the, for each um, basis. Uh, so how it works, there's many techniques, and uh, Jared presents you uh, most of these techniques this morning. Uh, one of the most used is the one from Illumina, and it's called um, uh, sequencing by synthesis. And how it works, the idea you take your DNA, you shear it at a given size, uh, so you know approximately the size you expect to have in, in terms of uh, DNA molecules. You add specific adapters at the end. These adapters will allow you first to uh, link your uh, molecules onto the flow cell and to start the sequencing later on. So what you do first, you attach your molecules like that, and you have like, uh, so when you attach molecules, then you denaturate the molecules and you have single strand molecules. And then you, what you do after that, you do uh, what we call the uh, bridge amplification. So you have a molecule with one end, uh, an adapter that is uh, linked to the flow cell, and the other adapter at the other end will match a free spot on the flow cell. So it will create a bridge, and you could use this structure to do amplification. Then you relapse the two, uh, two strand structures, and you will have two molecules in the two di direction. And then you repeat this uh, process uh, a number given of time to generate the cluster of molecules like that. So in your cluster, you will have molecules in the, in the two directions. So you have this molecule, and then you start from one end, so specific to only one copy of the, of the two copies you have in your cluster, and you start to incorporate your bases and to take picture of your, uh, of, of your, um, of your sequencing uh, integration, so as Jared present this morning. If you have more questions about that, feel free to ask at the end or, or during the practical. I, will, I can give you more detail, but I think uh, it was really well covered this, mo this morning. Um, so in terms of technology, uh, we have uh, five ma major players uh, for sequencing. Uh, we have uh, live technology, Illumina. So Illumina is really the, the main, the major player. Uh, Roche, but Roche, uh, the technology, the 454, is uh, actually dying. And we have PacBio and Oxford Nanopod. So the, the, this different type of technology could be uh, grouped into different type of, um, of molecules. So we have the small uh, read technology. So usually we have uh, molecules around 
50 to uh, 200 base pair. We have uh, medium molecules. It shows low, around six to seven uh, uh, hundred um, base pair. And we have long read molecules. We could go up to uh, 50 or 100 kb of long molecules. So what is important to see when you have got this technology is to understand uh, what is the strength and the disadvantage of each technology. So here we've got a summary. I won't, I won't explain everything, uh, but you have it in your um, uh, with you, so you can you can look. So it's really important to understand what choose when you choose a technology. What uh, this technology will bring you. I mean, what type of molecule, but what type of error, what type of uh, of disadvantages? Because when you decide to design your project, it's important you, depending on what you are interested in. It's important to choose the, the right technology. Uh, so one thing which is, which is really important it's the um, the number of error. So you see that the short uh, the short read technology are less error prone than the than the long read technologies, and it's also the, so the size of the the size of the molecules, the number of um, of uh, read per run. So all these parameters you need to take into account because if I need to sequence a bacteria or a human, I don't need the same uh, the same amount of uh, reads. So all these kind of parameters you need to uh, to think about uh, before designing your um, your uh, your um, uh, um, your experiment. So all these technologies uh, are more prone for specific type of application. So here at the center in Montreal, we have almost all the technology except the solid one, and we here how we use the technology. So the short, the real, the mid, the medium. Uh, the medium technology, so the medium read lens technology, uh, we use it usually to do uh, some small de novo ge genoma genome sequencing, but not so much. Now we have long read technology. Uh, we use it mostly to do metagenomics and amplicon sequencing. So uh, amplicon sequencing, it's the same as validation. So it's when we do uh, really uh, we amplify by PCR specific fragment, and we want to have uh, an, the sequence of fragment of five to six hundred uh, base pair. The short read technologies, so the short reads go with really high throughput. It's used mainly to do all the wall, uh, wall, gen wall omics, so wall genome, wall exome, wall transcriptome, uh, chip seq, all, all the um, uh, experiment where you want to interrogate the wall, uh, the, the, the entire set of your of your of your genome, whatever it's RNA, uh, DNA, and so on. And then you have the long read technologies. So here are the, these two technologies, PacBio and Oxford Nanopore. Uh, here we use it mostly to do uh, so small and medium uh, genome uh, analysis. And particularly, it's really um, efficient to do a genome assembly. So if you don't have any uh, reference genomes or for your species, to create the uh, reference genome is really good. We also do uh, to do some target se sequencing if we want, like if we want to characterize a full transcript of uh, one or two KB. It's it's cool to have uh, the the full transcript in one molecule, so you can see one read that contains all your transcript instead of instead of multiple read. Uh, and we also have recently uh, acquired in the center this new technology, which is called Tenex, uh, which is really cool. It's not a sequencing technology; it's a library prep technology. The idea is to uh, do your library. When you do your library, uh, um, your library will be done for each molecules or set of molecules on a space on a bead, uh, which contain everything. So, and you will add a specific barcode to each of your molecule. So, the idea is to able to be able to link your molecule. So, you will do short, short, um, short sequencing. So, like Illumina sequencing. But you will have a specific barcode that will be able to link all your molecule together, and you will be able to either reconstruct reconstruct long haplotype of uh, 30 to 50 KB long. So you will know that all these molecules with high, uh, with low, low level of error will come from the same uh, haplotype. So you will be able to rematch things and do uh, haplotyping. But it's also, what is really, where it's really cool is also you can do, instead of linking all molecules, you can do single cell uh, library prep. So you put your, your cell and each specific uh, cell will be tagged with a specific uh, barcode. And then you do a sequence, you have all your, all, all your cells, and you can differentiate where the DNA comes from from the different cells. So it's, it's a really cool technology. 
Yeah. What's the mug kick number? Mesh kick is a, mesh kick, so mesh kick is a center. Uh, McGill so University. So many you have. Yeah. Um, so when it's time to design your um, your uh, experiment, this is my recommendation in terms of what you need to think. What are the, what are the, what reasons I need? What library type I need to do? So RNA, DNA, or uh, paired end, single end. Which uh, technology, which profile of error I want? Because if I want to, if I'm interested in uh, in Dell's uh, long read, could be uh, problematic. If I, so, depending on what you are interested in, and depending on your uh, your budget, and depending on how many how depth how many depths of coverage I need per sample, do I need to barcode or not my uh, sample? Because we know that barcoding is cool, but it also implies some could imply some um, some bias in your data. We know the recently that. Recent Talk about uh, index switching and, and everything. There's other parameters you, you need to take into account. It's cost and turn turnaround time. I put it in gray there because for me it's really not the major parameters. And really often pe uh, people and PI come to me and to design a project, don't come to see me, and they arrive. They say I want to do that, 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 but I only have this um, this uh, amount of money. Uh, how I should adapt to do everything with that amount of money? And this is not a good strategy. Uh, you need to first think design, and then you, you have your design, then you have your budget, and you say, in, with this budget, I can do either the whole set of experiment or only a part of experiment, not try to do to fit everything in a small budget. Otherwise, you will, you will just generate data that are unusable at the end. OK. So this is the introduction about the technology. Now, how we can um, analyze the data. So here, uh, in this um, workshop, we are uh, working about uh, DNSSEC analysis. So we will only focus on DNSSEC. So here is, uh, I show you the, um, the workflow of the DNSSEC pipeline we have uh, developed in our center. And in, in this module, we will only talk about the first step, so the, the processing data to generate um, high quality uh, alignment file ready to do variant coding. We'll show, the, we'll show the rest of the pipeline tomorrow. So just to give you a more detail, a more summary of, the, of, this, uh, of this part. So the idea of this, uh, of, this, uh, of this module is to, how can I do when I start from a fastq file and generate a sequence ready uh, for variant coding? So this, meant this could be uh, divided in three steps. So what I, I, I talk about fastq file. What is a fastq file? So the fastq file is, in most of the case, what the, form, the file format uh, uh, that uh, you, the, the format of the file you will receive from your center. So usually, if you have, uh, if you when you sequence your molecules, if your molecules are long enough, uh, you will do a pair end sequencing. So you will take your molecules and you will uh, sequence one end in a, in a, of the molecule and the other end of the molecules. So you won't have the, the, the middle of your molecules. So you will have the two reads. So it's what we call a paired read. So you will, you will have for each sample two files, the, the file with the N1 and the file with the N2. In each file, you will have for each sequence four lines. The first lines, which correspond to the header of the sequence. So the first part is the name. So it's always starting with the at sign. And you have the name of the, of the, of the sequence, which correspond usually to the name of the sample, to uh, the name of the machines and some some uh, physical position of the of the sequence on the flow cell, and at the end you've got uh, you've got um, and then this should tell you if it's your read one or read two. Then you will have your sequence in a, in a base. Then you will have the place for another either. So if for Illumina, it you will it will just be a plus sign, but for other type of uh, technology, it could be. Uh, other, you could have a repetition of the of the header with the plus sign instead of the add sign, and you will have a first the first line, which will correspond to the uh, value of the quality of your um, of each basis. So you will see that you will have for each basis you will have a, a value quality which is not corresponding to four, because you can imagine if I have a value quality of. 100. I don't know if I have 100 to which uh, character, to which 
basis correspond. So the value that you have here, it uh, represents the, um, so each quality is one, let is a one letter, and it's uh, uh, ASCII value of the, of the letter. So four don't mean it's four. Four, you need to go, go to the ASCII table and know uh, what, the value, what the ASCII value of the four, and you will have the quality of your data. Plus or minus uh, uh, a, a basic um, uh, amount of, um, of the value, but we will see that later. So what this uh, base quality mean? So when you are able to extract the value of your base quality, so you will have a base quality uh, like that, and the base quality uh, is a thread score quality. So thread score quality, it means that it's minus 10 log bas 10 of the probability. And for the base quality, the probability is a probability that this base have been wrongly called. So it's a probability that you have an error. So what you want is to have the, higher, the highest base quality to have the lower uh, probability to have an error on your call. So when we receive your, or the FASTQ file, we have this base quality. What we really do, we usually do, we uh, generate this kind of plot, uh, which uh, represents the distribution of the base quality along your sequence for all your sequence. So each uh, yellow bar, each yellow box represents the distribution uh, the 95% distribution of the base quality for all the sequence at this position, so at the first base of the read. Then you go second read, third read, and so on until the end of the of the of the of the read. And it's interest, it's uh, important to look at that because if you have a low base quality, it can bias your analysis at the end because the lower quality, the more chance you have to have. Uh, error in your read and to uh, confound error with a uh, variant. Mm -hmm. Another type of um, uh, matrix, and you see we do on the on the fast queue. As uh, previously, we take the we take all the read and we'll look what are um, the base content. So each line, each color represents a different basis, and how many so the the, the percentage of these bases at each position. So you will see here at the beginning it's a bit uh, non-random, and then it's become random up to 50% uh, of each basis. So this is a plot that you expect to see uh, in RNA analysis, uh, because in RNA, the way the RNA is cap is catch the cDNA, uh, the RNA is catch cut to generate the cDNA is a non in non-random. It's why we observe this uh, non-random pattern. And as the cDNA works on gene, we expect to have uh, 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 55, no, 25% um, of each basis on the gene. If we look at some whole genome, we will expect to have a line here of GC higher because we have a higher GC content in the genome. We have around 60% of uh, GC with 40% uh, of 80. So depending on what you are doing, if you are doing a whole genome and you see this pattern, you say, oh, they don't do a whole genome, they do a RNA. So that kind of QC you can you can do to look at your data. Another type of QC we currently we really often do is to look what are the known sequence that we found in your data. In known sequence, I mean when you prepare your library, you have specific adapters, you have all this all these sequence that you have added and used to generate your library. We know this sequence, we know the sequence of these uh, molecules, and so we just look: do we detect this uh, sequence in your data? So the, you always expect to have a bit of this sequence because sometimes your molecules are too short, so you go over the whole molecule. So if you see some molecule, it's not a problem. If you see a lot of them, that become a problem. Uh, what we also do, we also, ex uh, bef we also directly from the FASTQ are able to estimate uh, a row, to do a row estimate of the percentage of duplication in your uh, data. So duplication, it's uh, read that represent the same initial molecules, and you don't want them. You want to have the maximum of reads that represent a different molecules, because if you have uh, 20, 100 reads that represent the same initial molecules at the beginning, you don't, you don't need them. You don't need to have 100 times the, the same uh, molecules, because it will, if you have an error in this molecule at the beginning, when you do first PCR, you will have 100 times this error. You want to have the most as possible, the, the, the most often 
you, are, you expect to have a large diversity of molecules. What we do also, it's uh, something that we had only like, I, uh, I say like five years ago. Uh, it's just what we do when we have fast queue. We take, uh, we randomly take uh, 100 of 1,000 reads and we blast against the NT uh, databases just to check what we have sequenced. Because sometimes you could have some, some surprise because there could be some contamination or um, mixing. So if you are sequencing human and you see that result with mouse as first, you say, oh, there's a problem. So when we have done all this QC, uh, usually, especially based on this one, when you see, oh, I got some, um, some bad quality, or if I've got some adapters or anything, what we'll do next is to do trimming. So what, what trimming means, it will, will, we will trim the read to remove the bad quality uh, bases. Yeah? On that previous one, the QC of raw sequences, what number of hits for the non-target species would cause you concern? So for example, like there's, there's 65 human hits in that table. Yeah. That's probably because of sequence similarity between the human and the most yeah, yeah. targeting. What level would make you worried that you had some human contamination in your mouse sample or vice versa? Um, I would say that uh, usually, I, I cannot give you a rule of thumb because there's no clear, but if I see less than uh, 1% uh, and, or 0.1%, I, I, would, I would be fine. You know, because I know that, you know, I, will, I know that just by the reference assembly, I would lose around, depending on, on the, the species, around one to ten percent of my read just because the assembly is not is not good enough to assemble, to to align all my reads. So if I have like zero one or one percent of something that is, that has been contaminated, if I if I'm if it's too close to my species, I would be probably worried. You know, if I have contaminated, but if it's like mouse and if it's bacteria and I'm human, if I only like one percent of bacteria, I will say okay, I will lose this one percent and not worry. But the lower is the better. So trimming. So uh, as I said, trimming is done to um, remove low quality bases. So you have your your read, you have your adapter at each uh, end of the of the read, and you have start after the adapter at its sequence, and you have to do the forward um, sequencing, and you have to do the reverse sequencing. So you can imagine if the read are too short. I will go and sequence over the adapter. So what do what we do when we do uh, trimming? We remove, we look for adapter, and if you find adapter at the end of the of the read one or the read two, we remove uh, this sequence. After that, we take all the molecules, starting by the end of the of the read, because we know that due to phasing uh, issue of the cluster, we know that. At the beginning of the molecule, the quality will be really good, and then it will decrease because with the time there are some molecules that will in advance or late of the of the world group, and we'll start to uh, see some uh, discrepancy in the in the in the uh, sequence in the sequence we are uh, reading. So we'll start with the end of the molecules. We'll look at the quality. If the quality of the molecule is lower than the given we 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 assume is good, we will cut the bases. And we go to the next basis, and if the quality is still lower, we'll cut the base, the base until we got a uh, base as with a quality uh, over the uh, given result. Most of the time, we use 20 or 30 uh, um, as, a, as a result. Then, when, 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 we have the, when we have done that, we'll look at the length of each molecule, uh, each remaining molecule, because some molecule will be 100 base pairs, some other will be 50, some other depending on how much we have trimmed. And some could be really short. So if the molecule is too short, we drop the molecule because if you have a molecule of 32 uh, bases, the alignment will be will be uh, of bad quality. So uh, 32 is all number, but you could do depending on what you want, depending on how. All these number are not like uh, I, I'm giving you it's what I'm using, but there's no like rule golden standard for that. So it's it's my uh, my experiment, and uh, I have to say that. When you do this, when you use this result, and for everything you will do in your uh, in your experiment, every software you will use, every every result you will use, you need to think that if I made a choice, I have a consequence of what I will see. If I decide to cut 
too much, uh, I will lose some information. If I decide to be uh, to be more like more uh, less strict, I will I will have more uh, more error. So every choice will have an impact. So you you just need to know what you are doing to to be aware of what choice you have done, and if you see something weird at the end, to know that is it could come from the choice you have made. So to do the trimming, us today will use Tumomatic, but there's many other tools. Uh, Cut Adapt is another really famous tool, and most of them do the job good. So if you have one, trim, one uh, trimmer that you prefer, just choose the one you, you prefer. So when you have trimming, trim your data, usually you have your fast queue in a good quality. The next thing you will do is to do the alignment. So to do the alignment, you need to have a reference. So it's really when you have your fast queue, you have two choices. Either you do the alignment, but to, that, to do that, you need to have a good reference uh, sequence. If you don't have, you will need to do uh, assembly. So you will see that uh, tomorrow afternoon with Jar Jar Jared that will come and present you. So I will not give you so much detail on that. But if you don't have a good reference, because you're working on a specific species, you generate your data, you do your own assembly, you generate your assembly, you have your reference sequence, and then you do your uh, assembly or your mapping. So the idea of the mapping is really to find the best location of your read on your reference sequence. Be careful. I don't say the true. The best location. Because your reference is not perfect. So for most of your read, it will be the true location. But for some of them, it will be the best location. So the, the problem of the mapping is so you, need, you have this million uh, set of reads that are usually one between 1 and 200 base pair longs. And you want to, it's a kind of puzzle, you want to place them on the reference genome, which is a billion, few billion longs. So it's not so complicated for one uh, read, but when you do that for a million reads, it could be really complicated. Why it's complicated? Because based on the nature of the reference genome, you could have multiple locations of, uh, of your reads, because there are some regions that are, uh, that are, that are the same at different locations in the genomes. And you, you don't want in, on, to look only at perfect matches. Because in most of the um, analyses with, the, sorry, with, DNS, with DNSSEC, what, to want, what you want to do is to find variants. So you want to be able to see these variants. If, you, if I'm only looking at perfect matches, I will only find the same things as the reference. So you need to let some freedom uh, to have some uh, differences to be, uh, to, to be <coughs> catched. So there's many algorithms to do that. Uh, us will use the uh, Bureau Wheeler Transfor Transformer uh, algorithm, which is one of the most used and efficient um, algorithms. And we will use the BWA tool, which is uh, one of the top three uh, mappers that you can use. The top one mapper is Novoalin. Uh, I won't use it because uh, we won't use it because uh, I think until recently it was a commercial software. So I don't push for commercial software. I'm a really like a open science and open, uh, open source software. And the difference is really, uh, really small. So you have to know also that if you want, so here BWA is really a, a, a liner that is dedicated to do uh, DNA, DNA sec analysis. If you want to do uh, other type of experiments, if you want to do RNA, if you want to do chip, you will need to, do, to use specific uh, mapper because all these molecules have different characteristics that the mapper could take into account. For example, for RNA, you need to break your molecules into exons. So you need to tolerate big gaps in your alignment, where BWA, BWA will try to uh, favorize region where you read align all along the, the, in one piece. What is really, really important when you do your alignment is to use the RG tags. So uh, it's an option when you do alignment. You could so the, the RG tag is usually you generate your sequence, um, except if you do, and also if you do some with uh, ISIC uh, X. Um, usually, when you do whole genome, you will end up with uh, several uh, experiments of sequencing, several um, um, read set for the same sample. So it's really important that this read set for each read set that generate that come out the, the machine, you do a specific alignment separately, and you give a specific read tag for this sample. Why? Just because aligning each lane separately will allow you to, to have more, uh, to, to, to gain time, because you will paralyze your work. And 
Two, because you will track where your read come from. Because at the end, when you merge all your lane together, you do your analysis and you see, oh, I saw a specific patterns, and which is not expected. That could be cool, but that could be sometimes uh, not cool. That could be a pattern you see way too much variation, way too much variant that you expect. Then you can go and speak to data in IGV by read group and see if you see this variant in all your read or all your different library. In that case, you will say, okay, that's something biological in my sample. If I see no, only one library, probably it's something more technical that come that come from in this library. Probably it's a library from another sample. From a, so it's really important to, to be able to track back what you will see at the end to use the read group. It's also really important because uh, now many tools know the importance of that uh, read group and will require you have set up the, the read group. So when you do your alignment, what you will end up is a file which is called uh, SAM or BAM. So uh, SAM is a uncompre in the uncompressed version. BAM is a binary version of the, of, of the file. And uh, SAM is really like, a, it's a, oh, sorry, I got a, I forgot the, uh, what, uh, what it's done for. Uh, it's right, yeah, sequence alignment mapping format. Thank you. So you will have one BAM per read set or per sample, depending on how many eggs. So, and in this sample, you will have a big header that explains you a lot of things. Uh, we'll see more in detail uh, during the practical. But what's in, important to know is that you will have one line for each alignment that has been found. So the line will be like that. You will have the read name, the same as you have in the, in the, in the FASTQ file. You will have a flag. So a flag is a way to a number that allow you to, um, that allow you to uh, describe uh, what's happened to your read, if you read this map and map. So it's a bit score you, you added. And for each event, you have a specific bit score. And you add everything, and you are able to re retrace uh, what has been done on, your, on, your, uh, on this read. Then you have the reference position, the, the two next uh, field. Then you will have the quality of your alignment. So it's a thread score, the same as for base quality, but for the whole read. Then you will have a cigar uh, value. So the cigar value des describes you how the read is mapped. I will see that more in detail during the practical, but here, for example, uh, 76M means 76 match. So that means that he has position, the, the, so it's a 76 read long. And all, all of the reads have been matched to a position on the genome. We, be careful, it don't mean that it's a perfect match. Match means that it corresponds to the, the same position, but it could be a variant. Then you have the information about the mate, if you have a mate. So if you have an equal sign, that means that the, the mate is uh, mapped on the same chromosome. And you have the position where the mate starts, the position of the mate, and the interstyle, so the distance between the two Mate. So it's not between the two, it's between the two ends of the read. Okay. Then you have the sequence quality, the base quality, and then you have other set of, uh, of um, field that is um, aligner dependent. Usually you will have the read group, you will have uh, other, uh, other metrics, which is, as I say, aligner dependent. So you have done your alignment, and that's good, but uh, there's no perfect aligner. The, the best ones are good, but they are not perfect. So what we need to do when we have done as when we have the fast queue, we need to refine our uh, file to take this alignment and try to have a better alignment. The first thing we need to do is to do indel realignment. Uh, so why we need to do that? So here is an example of indel realignment. So you have the reads, you have what you what you see before after alignment, and you see that. In this region, you accumulate many uh, possible uh, mismatch with your reference. So all the color red, uh, all the color red bases, as we saw this morning uh, with Florence. So when you see that, and when the, the, you probably say, oh, I got some issue in my read, because I don't expect to, to have so much variant in my read. <clears throat> I expect to have a variant around every, every KB. We, I don't expect to have like five or five or six uh, variants in the in the in, a, in like a ten or fifteen base pair. So why we saw this pattern is because the way um, wall genome um, and most of the aligner works, it's tend to favor mismatch again in Dell. 
So just a question of algorithm, but all the, most of the Alana will turn to, uh, to, to put more mismatch instead of, in that because it's a term of penalties and everything on, on the algorithm. So what, what, we should, what we do in these cases, when we have too much uh, variance, or when some of the reads show an indel, we take the, the region and we realign all the reads to say, if I place an indel at, at a given position, will it increase my alignment? So it's all what we do. It's slow, it's complicated to do, but it's really, uh, it will really uh, save your life and clean up your data. Uh, no, I, I just, I say that, but some uh, snip color, if you want to do uh, just variant and snip calling, some snip color and the one we will use, reduce the, uh, reduce the local alignment around the snip. When it call, when it calls, so it's not mandatory when you know that you have this kind of aligner you will use at the end, and you, and when you will use your data only for variants. But to my to my point of view, whatever the aligner I will use, I will do uh, I will do the indel realignment because I could use my data for other uh, for other purpose and just doing uh, uh, variant calling. So I don't care if it's an overkill to re to do it the first time and to, and have the aligners that redo it, but. I will read, but if you really know that you will use a specific aligner that taking into account and you will do nothing else with your data, you can skip this step, but I will not recommend that. that yeah? There's no way to parameterize the, the aligner uh, so that it doesn't create too many indels. That's not something they... It's about. not that it creates too many indels, it, 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 it creates too less indels. Yeah. Yeah, but usually you will have this, probably the, or the opposite problems. You will have too many. There's actually there's no way. To, we don't have find the perfect spot or perfect algorithm that is able to generate the perfect number. So it's either one or the other. The thing is that it's more computationally it's more easier to favor mismatch than in there. The next uh, improvement you want to do is to mark duplicates. So as I said, duplicates uh, at the first few level, we're able to evaluate the, the, the level of duplicates we have in your data. But what is important to do now is to really go over, go over your data and see what are really the duplicates and either remove it or mark, or mark them. So, uh, what are my duplicates come from? So there are different possibilities depending on the different technologies. Uh, so a classical one, which is almost uh, linked with uh, old uh, Illumina flow cell, is the optical duplicate. It means when you overload your data, you have three spots on your flow cell, and when you do bridge amplification, you've got really large cluster. And when the picture, when the sequencer takes a picture, if the cluster is too large, it will count your cluster as two. Uh, separate cluster. In that case, it will give you two, um, two different reads for the same cluster. So this is the one that are really what we call optical because it's really the, the, the optic of the sequencers that do that. And this one are really easy to target as we have the, the physical information of the cluster on the flow cell. If we saw exactly the same molecule in the, at the two physical, two uh, neighborhood position, we we'll know that is cluster. We have in the new flow cell, so this is the old flow cell, in the new flow cell we have the uh, the same type of uh, issue. In the new flow cell, the patent linear flow cell, all the well and all the cluster are predefined physically by a wall in the, in, the, in the cell. But if you don't load enough your, your data, you will have three holes. So you will have, if your molecule is too long, molecule will jump from one hole to the other. So it's a clustering. You have the PCR. So PCR, when you do the PCR at the beginning, you will have your molecules that will start to amplify uh, and you will have also sisters that create, that create um, um, but this one we, we won't uh, look at it. So the PCR is, you just do too much PCR of the sequence, so you will have, you increase the number of uh, your sequence in your data, and sister is just to create a kind of um, uh, uh, artifact in your, in your data. So how we look at the duplicates? Uh, so we can do before mapping as we do with uh, with the FASQ. So the idea is the camera approach. So what we what we do we take uh, not the first we take the, the base ten to twenty in the read one and the last ten uh, the last uh, the base uh, ten to twenty at the end of the of the read 
we match them as a camera and we look at the camera of every read and if it's a, the same sequence, it probably means that it's the same read. So it's not perfect, but it gives us a good estimate. Most of the time what we do, it we will, and what, how we will uh, look at it, is we will look at uh, using a positional approach. What we do, we just look where the read match at the, at the five prime of the first read and where it match at the five, five prime of the second read. And if it's the same position, we expect to see the same read. We take the five, the five prime because we know that at the other, other extremity we could have trimmed the read, so two reads could have been trimmed differently. So, so when we do the read, when we do that, when we find duplicates, what we do, we look at the quality of each of the duplicates of the same duplicate groups, and we only keep the one that has the best quality. And the other, as I say, either we remove from the BAM, either we mark them. Us, usually, we mark them because we want to, able to, to keep everything in the BAM file to be able to come back to the FASTQ file if we need for any, uh, any other reason. But doing one of the other uh, is a, gives the same result at the end of the analysis. Another type of, um, another type of, uh, um, sorry, the type of uh, um, improvement on your uh, alignment you can you need to do is the base recalibration. So why we do that? Because when you do sequencing, the, the vendor try to inflate the value of the uh, of the base quality, and also because the value of base quality is biased. First, by the position of the read, you see that you have a decrease at the end, and by the genomic context, because when you have sequence a different uh, a different base, it's the polymerase do not work at the same at the same speed, so you will more increase some error depending on the on the context genomic context of your of your basis. So the idea is to uh, do a modeling of that uh, system in your in your in your in your in your data. When, when you know where the, the read is, you can know the context, you can know the position to model and to correct to have a more uh, a more flat uh, distribution of your best quality all over your read and all over your uh, your um, genomic context. So you just correct for that. Then, when you have done that, you have uh, uh, alignment files that are ready, that are clean and ready to do your variant coding. So before you do your variant coding, when you do to that, what is really important to do is to take metrics. Uh, really, you should collect metrics at each time. It's really, really important because it's really by metrics you can understand what's happened to your data and if there are any uh, issue with your data. Because sometimes we don't look at the metrics, we do the analysis, we saw some weird pattern at the end, and then we go back at the metrics and we say, oh, there was an issue at this step. Okay, so it's really, really important. So many tools provide their metrics. Uh, uh, so we'll use some tool, BibliaTool, PKG, all have their metrics function. So you have uh, plenty of occasion to generate metrics, and it's really important. Uh, the most important uh, metrics, from my point of view, is the one, so all the QC at the beginning, but to know the trimming rate and how the trimming has gone, the alignment rate and how, we, how it's gone, the depth of coverage, the insert size, uh, and so on. But this is a, the, if I need to select four, I will only select this one. So when you have done that, then you, can, you will be able to go and do what we'll do at module four and five, which would be do the variant coding for SNV or for a structural variant. Oh, I don't have my conclusion. So I will do my conclusion without the slide. Uh, so my conclusion is uh, NGS and working in NGS is really something that is uh, interesting, but that will require you to have a good understanding of the biology, of the mathematics, and of the informatics. So biology to understand what you are doing and your experiment, uh, mathematics to understand what are the um, algorithms that are used by tools, informatics, how to um, use uh, and uh, run these tools. What is really important? Metrics, 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 metrics. The more is the better. Uh, and also, um, one of the major limitations that we have with working with NGS is uh, informatics. So uh, it's really a kind of uh, size of the data for one sample is uh, for whole genome could be one sample, one MAM file could be 500 gigabyte of data. When we do the uh, processing, it could uh, it could be uh, three or four times, 
three or four times uh, this amount of data of, of space you need. So when you can imagine when you have uh, when you process for a kind of uh, random project, you, if you process 50, 100 samples, you can imagine you can have like tera, tera, tera of data. So uh, informatics is really the limiting factor of the NGS actually. Okay, that's it for uh, for this uh, lecture. You have any question? Yeah. I have a question about your marking uh, duplicate slide. Yeah. So it's my understanding that the reason that we use spread scores is because they can be uh, summed when you're comparing uh, your confidences. So for example, if you have paired end reads where there's an overlap, in the overlap region, uh, when you have agreement, you can sum or, or, uh, the, the confidence score because you have twice the evidence for that point. And if there's a contradiction, you take the difference because you know your confidence is uh, your more confident call is reduced by your less confident call. And so what I'm wondering is if you have duplicate reads, um, the same way that you would uh, with uh, an overlap where you would increase your confidence, rather than taking your most confident scores, can you not sum the, uh, the agreement and then subtract the uh, disagreement to give you a, a more confident answer for that particular uh, fragment? We could, but here uh, the, the idea behind the marking duplicates is uh, when we, we, we could perhaps correct to have probably the better uh, copy, but it's quite complicated to do because it's me, it means that you need to, to change, for example, the, the, the sequence. And the other thing is when you have like discrepancy, how do you know which one is true? So how do you correct that? Well, That's uh, because you can say, okay, it's overlap. If it's a perfect match, you can you can say, okay, that, that's perfect. I'm keeping that. But if I if I start to have like two or three copies that don't perfectly over, overlap, mm -hmm. and that shows discrepancy on what don't overlap, which one do you choose? There's this kind of question which is, and you don't want to introduce error. Right. So the idea is, is not. Really easy to to decide what is uh, the, the the truth right. uh, when you merge. If everything merged together, yeah, you can just like uh, use that one and say, okay, I I, I could increase my quality, my uh, my my mapping quality. Uh, but your mapping quality, is, if you have exactly the same thing, should be the, should be the same for 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 everything. Right. So I don't see how you can really improve your mapping. Uh, your, your mapping quality is that way. I guess the, the piece I'm probably missing is that uh, you said that you, you just you keep the one with the best quality score as the one with the confidence. The best, mm, the, yeah, the okay, best. Sorry, yeah, so I, so it takes the best uh, quality, so the best uh, best quality all over the sequence. So the and the best map, mapping quality. So it takes the one that seems to be. The better sequence and the and the best um, the best my map head should be the same, but the better sequence quality. So because if you have one read which has a drop of quality at the end, you say okay, I'm trusting more the one that has and not this drop of quality. Right. So it's why we we keep only that one. So the, the thing I was wondering then is that if you have a contradiction, shouldn't you be taking your best quality one and subtracting the uncertainty that's introduced by the one that's similar but has a disagreement? Because each of those um, calls has a certain probability associated with it. And just because one has the, the highest probability, that doesn't necessarily mean it's correct. And so doesn't the uncertainty introduced by the other diminish the quality of your best call? Is that, um, I feel like maybe I'm not making sense. Because if the other, uh, you have discrepancy, but you know the quality is, is lower. Mm -hmm. So you probably, you are more likely that this other uh, reads uh, bring you an error. So it's why you remove them. You don't want to take them because you, you don't want to, to introduce the errors they can contain. Uh, does that make sense for you? I, I think I yeah, thanks. Because the idea is you don't want, usually, you know, it's a random one because most of the time all this uh, sequence will have the same sequence because they come from, they are duplicates. 
so there's not really so much difference in between. What is different is also the size of the of the read because some of them will be trimmed to a certain level, the other will won't be trimmed. So that could make the difference. But you try to have the, the, the best general the, the best general quality. And if you take the information of the others that are lowest quality, the only thing you can bring is to bring some uh, some error. So it's why we remove them. The other won't give you a real answer, I think, because they are of, of low quality. Yeah? Usually, it's better to do after mapping, but I'm not aware of a specific program that handles uh, parallel sequence. Um, do you mean by, by that haplotypes or this kind of? Yes. So usually, it's better. No, it depends on the on the reference. So it's. Uh, so at this time, it's more a question of assembly. You will try to, to reassemble. Uh, in that case, uh, parallel sequence is, a, is a really the, the problem because you will break your thing. Or you will break. So if you are able to have long read enough to go over your parallel sequence and you are able to generate correct reference, you will map them. And then you will probably, you try usually, uh, in most of the reference, you try to minimize the parallel sequence to the num lower number of copies. And then you will have this amount of sequence, the other read from the different parallels that will map in the same copy. And you will see that you have uh, an, um, an over uh, rate of uh, read at this location. And you will be able to tell, OK, this region is a parallel sequence. If you don't have the reference sequence, it's more uh, it's more problematic because you will need to generate this reference sequence before doing the and you will probably not be able to generate the sequence uh, at this location. Now, uh, if we talk about human genomes, the new version of the human genomes have been made uh, the HG38, and they add a lot of haplotypes, especially for the HLA region. So we know we have this, uh, I think they, they had like hundred or a few hundred of haplotype for uh, HLA uh, sequence. That's a, that's a really a big issue for the aligner. Because if I align my read on that, if the read is on this region, it will see, oh, I can map on this, on the basic haplotype, but I'm going to map on many of other haplotypes. So, I will, so it will mark it as uh, mapping quality of zero, because it will have equal chance to map at different locations. So now with a new uh, reference, uh, like BWA and other type of, um, of aligner that have developed this strategy where you inform the aligner of where you expect to see these haplotype patterns. So the read will be mapped uh, uh, normally, but if it falls in the region that are marked, it will add a mark to the read, and then you pre-process your BAM file, and it will specifically go to the haplotype and redistribute the read between the haplotype and do not mark the read as unmapped. So the new uh, version are haplotype aware, but you need to know uh, the haplotype in your uh, reference. So it's really, as I say, for the, as you first, uh, as my first answer, is really a question of the quality of your uh, reference. Can I ask a pretty really basic question? So, yeah, yeah, go. So, so it's about the luminous sequencing. I'm a bit confused in my head. So you put the template on the poster, yeah. and then you amplify Yeah. And then it looks like you sequence in one direction. Or is it both directions? What do you mean by one direction? Well, it's like, it's, so we talk there's a forward and reverse read. Yeah. But, but so if you've got this cluster, mm -hmm. are you just are you just getting a, a unidirectional read, or do, at this stage do you get the bidirectional? So you've got one read in one thread. So if you take this cluster, you can imagine this cluster will be a mix of uh, so so pink, down, and uh, purple up. Yeah. And there will be a mix of other molecules which will be uh, purple down and pink up. Okay. 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 So when the when the when the probe is on the on the flow cell, you cannot use it for sequencing. Okay. 
The sequencing will al always start from the result. So you can imagine that. So we are, you have the cluster group of forward and group, a group of reverse. So, and you will start, so first read will be with the purple one, so the complementary, uh, so the first read we bring at the, before the first read the, the complementary adapter of the, of the purple one. And then all the purple, all the molecule with the purple on top will start to sequence. Yeah. Because the adapter is, uh, is available and uh, the complementary arrive, and then we will measure. Then at the end of the read one, after a given number of, of cycles, 100, well, everything is wiped. And then it brings the complementary of the pink one. And all the molecules that have the pink one on top will start to sequence, and you will have the second read. Okay, that's where it's Thanks. And it's why your two reads will be on different strands. Mm -hmm.